Dr. Bergman, when we left, you said that 98% of the leading scientists today claim to be atheists. That's a scary figure to me. Uh, why is there this great acceptance of evolution? Well, the main reason is, is that's legally, the courts have said, that's the only view that can be taught. In fact, when one tries to teach information against, like some of the stuff I presented here, try to present this information in the college classroom, you're accused of teaching creationism. So even though we've had scientists that presented articles from the leading scientific magazines in the world, like Nature and Science and, and Cell and so on, that clearly point out some of the stuff that I brought out, sometimes they get in trouble for this. It's just, to me, it's the saddest thing. The, word, the very essence of the word science is knowledge. And when we stop looking for truth and we limit the knowledge, uh, we can't be going in the right direction. Right, and one thing we really stress in academia is freedom, yes. academic freedom. You have to be able to free, be free to discuss ideas because so many ideas that were not accepted at all today are widely accepted. Well, Galileo is, of course, the most famous case where indeed many of his colleagues, and by the way, the opposition to Galileo was primarily his scientific colleagues. Right. And so we have ideas that were opposed. Now we widely accept them because, well, they're true. And the true. same thing is true in this area. I've often said that evolution is going to be proved wrong, but by the scientists, they will have to do it first. And eventually it has to fall because the evidence now is overwhelming. And in the near future, I'm fully convinced, it'll be well beyond overwhelming because more and more studies are in essence showing that Darwinism, as I defined it earlier, from the goo to you by way of the zoo, that more and more evidence is being built up against scientific evidence, genetic studies especially, is being accumulated against this worldview. And it's wrong. And I can see if the system lasts this long, I can see 50 years from now, scientists will be embarrassed at what happened today against the opposers of Darwinism, which we often call Darwin skeptics or Darwin doubters. So what, why is it so, so accepted? Okay, one, one reason is people want to conform. I know in academia, right. I'm with evolutionists all day and I'm teaching astronomy this semester. The, about every chapter covers the evolution of the stars, the planets, of the galaxies and so on. And so you're surrounded by this. My colleagues accept this. So part of it's the social environment. If you have questions about Darwinism when you start teaching, and I know creationists that were creationists all the way through their doctoral program, when they started teaching at a university, then they became evolutionists because it's, it's the social trend, it's the social norm, and people want to go along. We Peer don't want Peer pressure to. in the academic world is huge, isn't it? It's enormous. It's a major problem, yes. Yeah. That's true. Well, other reasons are, uh, at each educational level, as I point out here in the PowerPoint, each educational level, creations are filtered out for a number of reasons. I had students tell me uh, that uh, when they went to their first class in biology, the professor said, if you're a creationist, please raise your hand. And then three or four people looked around and raised their hand. And then he said, if you're a creationist, please stand up. And so they stood up. Then he said, I want all of you to leave this classroom right now. I do not want you in my classroom. Wow. Now that's an extreme example, but on the other hand, one gets the idea pretty clearly that creationists are not accepted. So conformity is a major, a major reason. And uh, when we look at the churches, I, I see a lot of the problem in the churches. For example, the churches, the early church fathers taught what they call the two books theory. And that is we can learn about God from the Bible, from his word. We can also learn about God from his creation. You learn an artist by studying his works. You learn about a musician by studying his compositions. You learn about God by studying his creation. The, 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 the heavens declare the glory of God. Exactly. Yes. And that was stressed in the early church. And it's stressed in some churches today. But unfortunately, all too often has not been stressed. Besides all the other evil we've talked about, uh, Darwin was really quite a racist and quite a sexual bigot, wasn't he? Would you, you have an example of that? Would you share it with us? Yeah, he was. In fact, there's an excellent example among many in his 1871 book called The Descent of Man. I'm page 504 and I'll read it. So I'll quote from here. And he, he goes in and details why he concluded this was true. Namely, that women just have not accomplished much of anything in terms of art and music, painting, history, and so on. And then he concludes... The quote, the average of mental power in man must be above that of woman. <laughs> and that today would be ring a lot of bells. People would strongly object to that for good reason. 